It's been another period of solid progress for the global economy and the local outlook, despite a few outliers. So when will the RBA be putting up rates, if at all? A quick update on our view, halfway through spring. While most of the news has been positive, let's put the bad news on the table first. Our retail sales numbers were very disappointing, despite the strong jobs market and low interest rates to encourage spending. Retail sales values for August, released last week, fell across the board and are now lower in every category this financial year. So retailers may face a tough Christmas, although sales are still up 2.1% year on year and this latest reading may be a one-off. The other disappointing trend over the last few weeks has been in commodity markets, where despite a weaker US dollar, the price of iron ore has kept falling. And this is one of the main reasons the Aussie dollar has given up some ground, back down to around 78 US cents. But of course, a lower exchange rate is actually a good thing for local competitiveness. In the neutral category for recent price movements is housing. Residential house price growth has clearly slowed. But we would argue this is probably a good thing, as would be a mild fall, as long as we avoid a more dramatic decline or even a bubble. Household debt is still at a record level as a percentage of disposable income, although so is net household wealth, despite the low level of wages growth. And the Reserve Bank would be happy with the recent falls in investor and interest-only lending, which have been achieved without touching official interest rates. And that brings us to the good news. Both business and consumer confidence have jumped higher in the latest readings, with the October consumer measure at its highest level in a year, which augurs better for consumption going into year end. The lead from the jobs market is also a positive, which is one of the reasons business confidence has remained elevated. And in the survey, business conditions, other than retail, are all strong, especially on the eastern seaboard and a welcome jump in South Australia. The other source of good news is from overseas, with US data still pointing to a rate hike in December, despite their troubles getting the tax reform through Congress. And reasonable numbers also from Japan and China, our two key export markets. So the International Monetary Fund have revised higher their growth estimates for 2017 and 18 for most major economies and for global growth. So where does that leave the RBA? It's a pretty complex equation, which is why there's such a wide range of forecasts out there. Some are still sticking to no rate rises or even a cut. But a more balanced view, we think, is a possible rate rise around August next year, with May a possibility if conditions continue to improve and depending on movements in inflation. We'll keep you posted on all of that, and so we'll see you soon for the next market update from Bendigo Bank. <laughs>